What a pedigreed, what a resume from Smith College on for Laura Tyson joins us. Professor from Berkeley, good noon to you. Good morning to you and good afternoon to you. <laughs> I, uh, I talked to you about a new Washington. How new is it mm -hmm. with the symbolism of the change in the House of Representatives? Well, it certainly uh, it has been a shift in power. Everyone knows that. Uh, some of the, uh, many of the Republicans who are taking positions of leadership are people who have been in the Congress for quite some time. I think that's actually good because I think that we really have to focus here on what is feasible. So I think this is a very important Congress working with the administration because, as you said at the top of your hour, a major issue here is crafting a long run a deficit reduction strategy for the country. I think it's essential to work on that. The world is looking at us to do that. And I hope that the Congress works with the administration to get that done. Uh, let's bring up the dreaded first chart here. Laura, we're going to go back here to the glory days of the Clinton administration with mm -hmm. terrific GDP, a return to the Tyson years. We'll call it a little fun there. Uh, but the answer mm -hmm. is GDP has been pretty good, but we just don't have that sustained good feeling of the late 1990s. Do we need an innovation, an internet wave to make that happen, or do we get it through public policy? Well, I think it's very important to re realize that we're coming out of the uh, longest and deepest uh, recession, uh, indeed in many parts of the country, depression, uh, since the 1930s. This is a difficult exit, and history suggests that the exit is going to be slow. Even if the economy grows at 4 percent for the next few years, the unemployment rate is going to remain elevated. It, is, it will come down gradually. Most forecasters are not thinking we get back to an unemployment rate of in the neighborhood of maybe five and a half to six percent until 2015. So I think we do have to worry about policy uh, that will promote jobs and help promote jobs now at the same time as we look at deficit reduction right. over the medium to long term. One thing we like to do here folks is tip uh, economics on its head. We talk about the unemployment rate, the unemployment this. Let's look at the 90 some percent employed, the employment to labor force ratio, the politics of greater employment. At the end of the day, Professor Tyson, we got to get people employed. We do this within a global competition, a new globalization. Yes. Is there a magic bullet or do we need some form of just simply renewed investment to get the job done? Well, I personally feel that we actually do have to keep our eye very much on investment. I tend to talk about three deficits that the country faces. A jobs deficit, which is very immediate with an unemployment rate still elevated 9.8 percent. A fiscal deficit, which we all know about and can talk about. But we really do have an investment or growth deficit. We have to find a way uh, through policy uh, and working with the private sector to make investments in our future growth. I tend to focus on things like uh, infrastructure investment and public-private partnerships in infrastructure, education. I think it's extremely important as we begin the process of reigning in the deficit not to do things that will impair the federal commitment to education. For example, Pell Grants. We could talk right. about those. Uh, the final area, uh, very important for our growth, is research and development. If you think about that boom you talked about, that internet boom of the late 1990s, yes. and you trace it back in time, you're going to see a lot of government and support for research and development. We cannot take our eye off of that ball. And there's a lot of space for support for research and development in clean energy, alternative energy, because one of the things that's disturbing, of course, about the current situation right now is that the U.S. economy picks up and the global economy picks up, the oil price starts rising dramatically. That is a drain on our economic growth. We have to find alternative energy, not just for environment reasons, not just for climate change reasons. Those are very important for national security and economic growth reasons. Uh, Laura, I want to bring up a David Rosenberg piece he published just moments ago. I'm sure you haven't seen this. Folks, we like to get you the research as soon as we can. Uh, how the Fed and the federal government in the future manage to redress their pregnant balance sheets without creating a major disturbance for the overall economy is a legitimate
legitimate question. Uh, Professor Tyson, this is the idea of being in control. How do you redress a budget deficit and yet maintain that leadership and that control that's necessary? Well, I think that the important thing about the budget deficit, which has been laid out in the various plans, including the Simpson-Bowles plan that was uh, presented just before uh, the holidays, this is going to take many years, and it's going to take many years, and actually it, we do have to focus on key areas that are very difficult to focus on but must be focused on. If you look at the real numbers, defense is an important part of this, Social Security important part of this, and by the way, over the long term, uh, health is a very important part of this. Now that we can discuss the Health Reform Act, a lot of, there's a lot of uh, provisions in there that are meant to slow that health care cost line down. And if that happens, that will really be a big help. But we do have to get control over these big items. The good news is if we lay out a plan now over many years, we can do it. And I think without doing grave damage to our right. uh, our goals. But we've got to start soon rather than later. I would guess, Professor Tyson, that you knew how to spell PAYGO with the Smith MIT track <laughs> that you took. Here's a chart from David Melpass. Folks, it's an elegant chart. We've used this before. Somehow I think we'll be using this like every third day for the next five years. Washington in search of a free lunch. And we've got receipts down. We've got expenditures sort of kind of flat. Maybe. Professor Tyson, which are you more focused on, cutting spending or building up receipts? Well, I think you have to distinguish here uh, the immediate situation from the longer term right. situation. The immediate situation, what's happened here is all around the world, including in the United States and certainly through the state governments of the United States, revenues have fallen off significantly because of the recession itself. Moreover, many spending items have increased because of the recession itself unemployment compensation, Medicaid, support for those who've really been decimated by the recession. So spending goes up, revenues go down during a recession. I think you need to look longer term. When you look longer term and you strip out those cyclical effects, right. it's pretty clear that uh, we need uh, work on both sides of the equation, the revenue side and the spending side. That's again why Simpson-Bowles or Rivlin Domenici, there are a couple different plans out there, they do both. They say, Look, we, we look at the but numbers, how, how and we can't see a solution only on one side. It's not possible. How do you link the political will with those good efforts by those good economists, strategists, mm -hmm. and political leaders? How do we dovetail this in to Washington and the new Washington of Speaker Boehner? <laughs> Well, I think, first of all, it's important uh, to listen to the American people themselves. The American people themselves, actually, when they look at the situation, that they uh, confirm uh, continuously their support for Social Security and their support for Medicare. So I think we have to say, all right, these are going to be with us. I think they should be with us, by the way. Mm -hmm. I defend that. But that's what the American people say. How can we uh, slow down uh, the costs? How can we reform the programs to help them deliver right. what the Americans want? So I think the political process has to look at what the American public is also saying here. Uh, but it's, it's, it's very tough. Well, the trade-offs are real. And people do have to make a key word here, key, key word here is compromise. Not everything each person wants can be done. When you have a serious budget constraint, you must well, compromise. Here's Bill Gross, uh, Professor Tyson, uh, capturing that need for compromise and that need to move forward, folks. I love this note, Bill Gross uh, of PIMCO writing uh, off of this. I see his, his wonderful note today, <laughs> off with our heads, everybody but Laura Tyson. Debt commission recommendations are tossed in the trash can. Tea Party election rhetoric eventually focuses on the minuscule and merely symbolic earmarks. So you see there, folks, from Bill Groats, this idea of the short term, the long term, the minuscule and grabbing the big picture. Laura, is it just simple? We need, we need a responsibility. We need a strict pay go. Well, I don't
don't think PAYGO is a solution to the long-run deficit problem that we're talking about. PAYGO is a way to, uh, for example, the president proposed, uh, and I believe the Congress will uh, try to enact some kind of cap on uh, non-defense, or maybe defense uh, with it, discretionary spending. Now, once you do that, if you want to increase spending on something, like, say, Pell Grants for students to attend college, you have to pay for it by finding a cut in spending elsewhere. So that is a very important budgetary tool for uh, right. getting discretionary spending under control. That does not deal with the kinds of reforms in Social Security, say, or the kinds of change in defense strategy and defense budgeting that we need to get the medium or long-term just... deficit under control. Pay goes not nearly enough. You know, I, li I like that idea. Laura, just in 30 seconds and we'll come back. Um, uh, what have you learned from California? What can Washington learn from what you've observed in Sacramento in the last 24 months? Well, I think what's very important uh, is uh, for uh, each spending item that people want. So what happens in California frequently is people go to the polls and they vote on an initiative for something they want. The initiative doesn't tell people how much it will cost, either that year or over a 10-year period. People also go and vote uh, essentially against revenues and against fees. There needs to be a process whereby the trade-offs are made very clear to people so that if they're, they mm -hmm. want something, the, the true 10-year or 20-year cost of that is understood when that something right. is put into policy. We're going to Professor Tyson, I'm putting up an eBay chart. Bring that chart up, uh, if you would, Rex. This is eBay since time began. I made a joke earlier you, about you getting your appropriate 200,000 shares of Facebook up front. You are steeped in the innovation of the West Coast. Here's Facebook again. They're doing it again. Just your thoughts on how this happens. It, it's, it's obviously a good thing for America to see these young kids uh, create so much value in technology. Well, it, it, it certainly uh, is, and it's something, you know, the great innovative spirit in the United States. I want to point out a couple other things about this. It's the great innovative spirit. It's the great venture capital community. We still have the largest share of the world's venture capital community. We still have great relationships between uh, universities and venture capital, uh, which is very, very important, because a lot of the ideas here really do start uh, in universities and really do start with the training of people through support for basic science. So I applaud it. I do think uh, uh, I heard you talk about the deal itself. And for my, for my mind, what this raises is a little bit of the change in the capital market. You know, this, this kind of transaction, it's not a usual capital market transaction in any way. We do have, and we've had for a long time, a trend in which uh, business in the United States has been, do, been increasingly in non-corporate forms. I only raise that because one of the things we haven't talked about, which I think is going to be discussed this year and as we look at deficit reduction, is tax reform, and in re particular, tax reform in the business community. You mentioned uh, GE versus uh, Facebook. Right. GE is a corporate form. They face the corporate income tax in the United States. It is very high. Canada just reduced its corporate income tax dramatically, as most countries have done, making it much more attractive for American companies to say, gee, maybe I should move more of what I do outside of the United States. Right. So we have to worry about how we tax business and what business forms we have in the United States. Within the taxation of that, then, Professor Tyson, a little bit of time we've got left with you. How do we get Main Street and Wall Street and all those stereotypes, how do we get them closer together with this new Congress? Well, I think actually the right way to do it is really to focus on the first deficit I talked about, and that is jobs. Jobs are created by the business community. The business community is financed with the help of Wall Street. Main Street and Wall Street should have 
a cooperative relationship. We've come off of a terrible, terrible financial crisis. We've come off of a great recession. People are understandably suspicious of business and finance. But truthfully, that's where the right. jobs come from. So I would like to see uh, the business leadership yeah. work with the financial market leadership and emphasize jobs and create jobs. I'm looking forward to more job creation this year by the private sector. It will go a long well, way to help restore business confidence. We're going to have to leave it there, Laura Tyson. Look forward to seeing you in Davos. Coming up